Oh, hold on a second. Okay. Uh, peace and blessings, love and light to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, here today. Um, uh, my name is Jamani Williams, a uh, public advocate of the uh, city of New York. I want to thank all my partners who are here representing uh, New Yorkers. Uh, Congress members, uh, Clark, Congressman of Nitty Velasquez. We have many advocates who are here as well who joined us today who have been in the fight in New York and DC and nationwide for many, many years. I also want to thank Mayor Eric Adams back home who helped to elevate our agenda at a press conference in New York this morning. Uh, also want to shout out Tiffany Raspberry who's here uh, from the mayor's office. We wanted to make sure we came down uh, for several reasons, uh, just for a framework. One, uh, the immigrant migrant crisis the asylum seekers has been off of the media for a few weeks for a few months and we're concerned because the situation is no less dire than when it was in the media cycle and we know uh new york city is getting 100 200 uh folks still every single day and that is going to increase exponentially after may 11th after the change in title 42 we want to make sure we get ahead of that we also want to make sure we lifted up the issues of uh, black mig migrants and black immigrants that often gets left out uh, in the conversation. And so we came to DC today to have conversations directly with people who are making the decisions to collaborate with executives and legislators from New York City to DC. In the last day or so, we met with and spoke with agencies like the Department of Justice and HUD. We have spoken with senators and representatives from New York and nationwide. Uh, what we have found is that some folks uh, particularly those who are outside of New York, uh, actually thanked us because they were unaware of how dire it still was since it has been off of uh, the media cycle. And we want to make sure that even our New York delegation heard from us and were trying their best to move on one accord. So we found a uh, broad agreement on what we needed to do, uh, but the way DC works, it felt sometimes there was a lack of urgency on many parts of moving at the same time. We know that often DC moves slowly, on immigration reform, on gun violence, and so many issues where we need to change. And sometimes it feels like DC is removed from this crisis, but we see the urgency in New York City, the immediacy of the immediacy of it, the crisis, the immediacy of the crisis. And we know that we can have quick action from DC if DC wants to move quickly, if it's a priority. It's happened before. So in the immediate crisis, we are asking the federal government to support our newest neighbors, issue new TPS temporary protected status designations, redesignations, and extensions to immigrants from countries experiencing security, political, and or economic conflict, natural disasters, and health crisis, reduce the current 180-day waiting period for work authorizations to reduce case backlogs for asylum seekers, uplift dignity, dignity not detention, yes. cease all contracts with private immigration detention centers, repeal mandatory detention, stop family detention and prohibit solitary confinement and pass the New Way Forward Act. And of course, we need federal funding to meet the crisis. Right. The money issue is real. We are going to continue to push our city government to do what's morally and legally right to do with this money and time. But we have to explain that it is unsustainable without the resources that we have to have. The issue at play here goes beyond the asylum seeker crisis to underlying infrastructure. That's why we're also calling on Congress to take steps, including ensuring health care in a human right by expanding eligibility and access to Medicaid, CHIP, and Affordable Care Act health insurance, exchanges for DACA recipients and other undocumented immigrants, also getting money to flow for vouchers for things like housing, helps us free up space, particularly from folks and New Yorkers who have been waiting in our systems for a very long time, getting folks out of the system will help new and aspiring New Yorkers and new Americans to come through the system. We also are trying to get other municipalities uh, to open up their space as well across the country, but also within New York State, asking the governor to encourage other municipalities to open up space 
to help so we can spread the loving nature of who we are uh, to make sure folks are arriving here and living with dignity. We further need to pass reforms, including pathways to permanent residency and citizenship, as well as clear as the, fam the family and employment-based backlogs, recapture unused visas, eliminate lengthy wait times. Programmatically, we are calling on the administration to increase funding for language accessibility and immigrant, <clears throat> excuse me, integration, uphold the Fair Housing Act regardless of immigration status, reform immigration courts and fund legal services, process individual tax payer identification number for all, enabling those without social security numbers the opportunity to file taxes. Here again, we want to bring up uh, particularly uh, immigrants who are coming from places uh, like Haiti, like West uh, Africa, who often have problems uh, at the uh, border with language access. We're asking folks to put a tracker system in electronically and on the paperwork where you can just put on there what language folks speaks that will make it easier as they move from space to space. Speaking of taxes, I want to say this, the burden of New York City finances that the mayor laid out is real. At the same time, cuts are not the answer, either to services being provided to asylum seekers or existing programs to New Yorkers who have been here for a very long time. <coughs> cuts, fight for resources, are mean. We have to be clear uh, when we're speaking about this, <coughs> excuse me, that we are speaking in a way that is not pitting people against one another. We can't do that. We can provide everything that everyone needs. In fact, many of these issues have existed pre-asylum seekers had Congress moved, had DC moved, had other people moved, we would have fixed it and it would not be as acute as it is right now. We can't leave anyone out of this conversation. We can't leave anyone without the supports they need. Back in New York City, it is Immigrant Heritage Week <clears throat> and I am the son of black Grenadian immigrants. So many of us here today and back home in New York come from immigrant backgrounds and have our own immigrant heritage story. The asylum seekers arriving in our city have their own stories as well a part of New York's and we have an obligation to do all we can with all we have to uplift their stories, voices and needs and meet them with action. What we do now is going to be the immigrant story that generations tell of what happened when they came to America, when they came to New York. With that, I want to first call up our, our congressional reps who I know I have votes to go to. So first, I want to call up uh, Congresswoman Clark, who was very helpful, appreciated and also chairs uh, uh, the uh, Caribbean, Caribbean immigration. Caribbean caucus. Caribbean caucus. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let me uh, thank our, our public advocate for bringing the fight here to Washington, D.C., but I'm just going to give him a little schooling. Uh, we do things by seniority here. Oh, okay. And uh, there is uh, a, a woman who uh, is from uh, the great state of New York who has been a leader on immigration even prior to me coming to Congress and who has been a mentor to me and I'd like to bring to the fore at this time, Congresswoman Nydia Velasquez. Uh, so just so I know, I was doing it, who came first? That's what I was trying to do, my bad. Seniority, seniority. That's why I'm in a city elected. Well, I, I, gotta I, I gotta tell you that I, I made it here. I was in my car waiting because I didn't see anyone that I could recognize. But of course, Yvette was here. And I came here and I look at her and I say, are you Yvette? <laughs> well, her new look and her hairstyle, uh, I love it. I love it. Congratulations. Uh, uh, Jumani, thank you so much uh, for coming down and uh, make the case and, and, and be part of our efforts here in Washington. Uh, to tell the American people, since when we lost our way, we cannot allow for this to happen. We have to continue to be the beacon of hope for so many migrants and immigrants who came to the shore seeking a better life for themselves and their families and to contribute to America. So the federal government, and I want to thank the mayor because on this issue he has been amazing and we are here to support his effort but also to recognize the financial burden that New York City has been dealing with and has been exposed to. The federal government must take responsibility 
for caring for people exercising their right to seek asylum in the United States of America and provide states with the resources they need to respond to this crisis. And uh, Jumani Williams discussed and mentioned so many actions that can be taken. And I just want to echo and be supportive of every of the uh, actions that you mentioned. But with more federal funding, we can help expand shelters, provide legal aid, and ensure that asylum seekers that have basic needs, like adequate, clo adequate clothing and food, are met. Increased funding at the federal level is necessary and will help our city meet this moment, but it's not a permanent solution. It is important to remember that this crisis did not begin a year ago and it's not confined to New York City. It is the result of a broken immigration and asylum system that has needed fixing for so many decades. Our government must build the capacity of our federal agencies to process asylum seekers and ramp up our ability to process people seeking protection at ports of entry. We must also step away from policies like the Biden administration's proposed asylum ban, yes. which will lead to more harm to men, women, and children fleeing their countries for a better life. I look forward to working with my colleagues on the local, state, and federal levels to meet this moment and ensure New York City remains a beacon for people worldwide dreaming of a better life. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'm up now. <laughs> Let me uh, say hello to everyone. Hello to the press. Hello to my colleagues and to the advocates who are here. I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark, and I proudly represent New York's 9th Congressional District in Central and South Brooklyn. I'd like to thank our public advocate, uh, Jamani Williams for inviting me to speak here today uh, to bring the federal perspective uh, to this gathering. We live in a country where everyone's family has at some point chosen to come to these shores seeking freedom or a better life with the exception of the enslaved African and the indigenous people. That's why we are here uh, we hear American politicians, even Americans themselves say, uh, love to call themselves a nation of immigrants. It's been nearly 250 years since the founding of our nation and still America has managed to maintain that self image. Whether through forced migration of millions of African slaves, restrictive immigration laws based on unjust fears of inferior races, the nativist movement that encouraged immigrants to assimilate or leave. But the true reality of America's immigrant heritage is much more complicated by beyond myth. It stands as the fundamental truth of the history of our great nation. The truth we understand our nation's immigration system today is impossible without knowing who's been kept out, let in, and how they've been treated once they've arrived. As it stands, our immigration laws have not been updated in more than 30 years. This has kept families apart for decades, limited our ability to attract and retain top ta talent, and forced millions of people to live their lives in per a perpetual state of uncertainty. The values, courage, and tenacity of people seeking the opportunity for a better life should guide our effort to support the immigrant community. And as a daughter of Jamaican immigrants, I'm uniquely familiar with the intestinal fortitude required to make the arduous journey and work every day to achieve the American dream, despite systems in place to exclude and to castigate. As a senior member of the House Homeland Security Committee, as co-chair of the Congressional Black Caucus's Foreign and Immigration Task Force, and a founding member of the House Committee's uh, Caribbean and Haiti caucuses, I have seen the glaring inequities and civil rights violations plaguing our immigrants in this nation. So let me be very clear. Our immigration system is broken. 
and I will not relent until our immigration system reflects a modern and equitable approach to this issue. The time has come for the values of our nation to be reflected in our immigration policies. We must, we need innovative policies to support uh, for, and community support to reimagine the immigration system in a humane, just, and fair manner. I am proud to stand here with my colleagues to demand additional federal aid to address the asylum seeker crisis. And let it, let's be clear, this is a crisis, not at our southern border, but here in, uh, in our communities and neighborhoods across this nation. We have a moral obligation to provide DREAMers, TPS, and DED recipients with a real manageable pathway to citizenship and permanent residency. Update the immigrant registry, clear the family and employment-based backlogs, and pass comprehensive immigration reform. They came here fleeing everything from political and economic conflict to natural disasters and health crises. I, they came seeking a better life. They came and made this nation a better and more prosperous place. We are a nation of immigrants, founded by immigrants. So we must do better for our immigrants. In closing, happy Immigrant Heritage Week. And let me just say to our public advocate, to our mayor, Eric Adams, job well done. Thank you for your advocacy. Thank you for standing alongside those who are just seeking the American dream, who are fleeing persecution, violence, and economic crisis, climate change. We are better than the system that currently exists. With your advocacy, with your support, we're going to make that change. We're going to make that difference. And I yield back. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I know this one. So next up, uh, our Congressman Alexandria Ocasio. Please. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to to our public advocate, Jumani Williams, as well as all of our other advocates and community organizers here today, trying and making sure that we do not let our eye off the ball when it comes to justice for our immigrant communities, as well as allowing New York City to do what we do. From the beginning of this country, it is, it is a tale as old as this country. New York City has been the place where immigrant families make their future in this country. And we must preserve that legacy. And we call on the administration to make the changes necessary so that we can continue to be that place in the world where families can aspire to come and transform their lives for the better. We have known for a very long time that when it comes to what New York City contributes to this country, it is, over, it is an overwhelming amount of money, even in the form of taxes. So when New York City requires that help and that assistance so that we can welcome immigrant families and do right by them, it is, it is the right thing to do to provide those resources to us. We are experts, our city is experts in welcoming immigrant families. I would rather these families come and make a place and contribute to New York City because they are valuable. They have so much to offer. And we hear that from our families, from the immigrant families here as well. And one of their biggest requests, let us work. Let us work. These families themselves, they say, we don't want to rely solely um, on, on our systems of, in, and entirely on systems of public assistance or shelters. We want to work. We want to contribute to this city starting today. And so one of the many asks is to have the Biden administration provide and lower the wait time for work authorizations as these folks continue to build a life here. It's also what New Yorkers want and what our industries want. So many industries from hotels and hospitality to beyond are also telling and calling on the Biden administration. Let us hire them. Let us accept their work and their labor in a dignified and equitable way. They want to pay taxes. They want to start a life. So who are we to get in the way of that when both American citizens who want to accept them, 
and the folks who come here who want to contribute are all on the same page. It is a no brainer. We are here as New Yorkers and we are asking the administration, let us do what New York does. Let us, let us allow people to make an American dream here because we know what results from that. That is why New York City is the greatest city on earth, on earth, because of our support, our acceptance of immigrant communities. And it always has been the case, and we are fighting for that to continue to be the case. So with that, I yield back to the public advocate. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> and of course, in the seniority rank. Yeah. Next up, our, our Junior. Yeah. Junior. <laughs> Congress member Dangle. Freshman. No. <laughs> 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 All right, freshman. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Uh, public advocate, Jumani Williams, it's great uh, to have you in in Washington on the grounds of the Capitol, all of the other advocates. It's uh, really nice for, for you to come to highlight what is such an important issue right now in our city and across the country. Uh, as the home of tens of thousands of migrants right now, New York City has welcomed our newest neighbors with open arms. And that is something we all should be so proud of. My grandmother was a baby when she escaped and her family escaped anti-Semitism in Russia and came through Ellis Island before settling actually down here in Washington, D.C., where she and her older brothers were able to live the American dream, go to college, and build lives for themselves. And I now have the honor of representing the 10th District of New York, which includes Ellis Island, and looks out right at the Statue of Liberty. We are in... Uh, in my community as well, we have some of the shelters for many of the migrants and asylum seekers who have come to New York City. And just like Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez said, when I visit them and I went with the public advocate to see one of the shelters, all they are saying is that they want the opportunity to work. They bring skills, they bring experience, but they are willing to do whatever they can to build a life for their families here. Now, we are obviously dealing with this crisis because New York City is welcoming these migrants and asylum seekers with open arms, unlike many states on the border. And that, of course, is draining the city's budget. So I am happy to be able to sponsor two bills, or I should say uh, request significant amount of money from the federal government along with my colleagues we've called for 264 million dollars to address the immigration case backlog and we've also called to for new york city to receive a significant share of the 800 million dollars in the shelter and services program to support the communities in the work that we need to care for new migrants but because this issue of the right to work is such a critical one. Uh, I co-sponsored along with some of my colleagues here, the Asylum Seeker Work Authorization Act, because what happens right now is that even after you apply for asylum, which takes a long time, you have to wait six months to apply for work authorization. That is completely excessive and unnecessary and is a barrier to so many people to be able to build a life for themselves and to get off of the city's dole so that the city does not need to take care of them to provide them with shelter. We need comprehensive immigration reform and we are going to continue to work on it. We are here together along with the public advocate to advocate for that immigration reform so that those who seek our shores to have a better life, to escape persecution, to escape the fear that so many are feeling right now around the world can get access and opportunity to pursue the American dream. And that is what we are all here together. That's what we're here to highlight. And we has to start right now with the administration providing the necessary funding for all of the migrants who are bused to New York City and welcome with open arms. So I thank the public advocate for coming down to highlight this issue. I thank the mayor, Eric Adams, as well, for all of his work and determination and dedication to ensuring that migrants and asylum seekers are treated with the dignity they deserve. And we look forward to continuing this fight. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you to our representatives. I know it's a busy day. Thank you so much for taking the time out. We're going to hear from some of our advocates.
I did want to lift up two things. One was just so as we have the work authorizations, uh, I want to be clear because I can hear it, what some of the responses are going to be. Believe it or not, in many spaces, there are labor so shortages that people are saying they need people to work. So these jobs won't be coming and be taken from other communities. They are available and that we want to match the people who need labor with the people who want to work. That's all that this is. And everybody on many sides agree of how important that is. So I don't want to, again, pit us versus them. There's a labor shortage. We have labor people who want to work and can't work. And secondly, just making sure we uplift them. These problems did not start with the asylum seeker. Uh, it has made it more acute because of where we are. But had we had dealt with the broken immigration system before, had we dealt with the housing crisis before, we would not be where we are today. Uh, I want to thank the advocates as well. Uh, we could not have done this day without the advocates helping, pushing, making sure that we had the right talking points. Uh, so I want to call up many of the advocates who are here today. Uh, first, uh, Bilal Askara. Oh, man. Ascaria. Ascaria. Bilal Ascaria, welcome to Dignity. They jack up my name all the time, so I apologize. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Uh, thank you everybody. My name is Bilal Ascaria. I lead the Welcome with Dignity campaign for asylum rights, and I, I just don't lead the campaign. I also came here uh, as a child with my parents when I was only five years old fleeing the war in Afghanistan. So my family sought asylum here. We represent the success of the asylum story uh, in the United States. It is a privilege for me to stand in front of these representatives and elected officials today speaking to you uh, because my family was given a chance that so many people today are not. Um, when we boil it down, the American people show us day in and day out at the local level what it means to welcome people with dignity. From people like my first grade teacher, Mrs. Street, who uh, when I showed up the first day of school, uh, not speaking English, not knowing the country, set aside books for me, a little sp special place for me and gave me the extra attention that I needed to learn English and become integrated into that uh, classroom. Since then, I'm here now in front of the United States Capitol advocating for people who are seeking the legal and human right to seek asylum. It happens in places like in my own neighborhood in Baltimore, where I found uh, that one of my neighbors was tutoring Afghan kids who had fled the fall of Kabul into English, and another neighbor who was uh, raising money to uh, purchase a bicycle for another person seeking asylum. We, we are at our best when we live up to New York City's example, and I want to thank the Office of the Public Advocate for your advocacy today here. I also want to humbly offer a little bit of a correction. This isn't a crisis caused by asylum seekers. The asylum seekers are not a crisis, right? The crisis is the people, the elected officials who are using people seeking asylum as political pawns, right? People who uh, are busing people, sometimes without their consent, to across the country um, and, and not seeing them as human beings. We know that when we welcome people with dignity and we implement the solutions that we have collated on our website, welcomewithdignity.org slash solutions, uh, family case management, uh, dignified reception model, um, and integrated community solutions, that people seeking asylum can thrive like I have. And so I wanna thank uh, everyone here today for their advocacy for coming down to DC. Jamani, thank you for leading this effort. And uh, thank you again to the members of Congress. Um, we can welcome people with dignity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next, we have uh, Dr. Henry Love from WIN. Thank you, public advocate. And thank you to all the members of Congress who are here today with us. I am the, probably the Vice President of Policy and Planning at Women in Need, WIN which is the country in New York City's largest uh, organization providing supports to the families and children experiencing homelessness. Every night, WIN serves about 6,000 people uh, a, a night. And that includes over 270 asylum-seeking families that came just in 2022 alone, including over 700 children. Before the winter started, we started to provide a family seeking asylum with over 1,000 winter coats, oh, 700. And we are just one provider. Um, and last month, we began our legal clinic series, which has screened hundreds of our residents to understand 
when their deadlines to apply for asylum are and help them build their cases and will hopefully support them as they apply through that process. And this is incredibly important to, in terms of all those uh, topics that were mentioned earlier, work authorization. For so many of our families, the reason why they came to New York, the reason why they want to do better for their families is through work. And so it is imperative that we come, we came today to represent our hundreds of asylum seeking families that are pleading for the right to work. We are here because the homelessness crisis and the immigration crisis are one in the same. They are not separate. Over half of our clients are immigrants with one third of them being asylum seekers. Homeless families need housing, simple. And our newest New Yorkers only choice is shelter and they have no option to get out right now. They don't qualify for any types of uh, benefits, SNAP, housing vouchers, and they can't work. So what we're calling for is the passage of the Asylum Seeker Work Authorization Act. The funding um, of at least 650 million from the emergency funding to reimburse uh, providers in municipalities like New York City that are supporting asylum seekers in their times of need. And I wanna be really clear about these families. These families have young children. They are fleeing imaginable violence. We had the opportunity to talk to our clients um, who were fleeing horrible violence in Venezuela and Honduras. You know, one mother who had to leave her four-year-old child behind and travel through the jungles of Central America with her baby in tow as she was also pregnant to come to the border and then to be re-traumatized at the border and then be shipped to New York City as a political pawn. These are the stories that we're hearing. People seeing their children as they cross the border floating and they're crossing the Rio Grande, seeing their baby float and thinking their baby is going to die. These are people who want to work and want to do better for their families. They're not evil, bad people. They're not criminals. They want to work. Um, and so I'll stop there. But again, thank you so much to our public advocate for allowing us to be here to represent so many of our clients. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, Ronald Clark from Baji. Um, thank you to the public advocate and his staff for making this event and today happen and the past few days of advocacy on the Hill and also the congressional leadership for all the work that they're doing on this matter. Um, I apologize in advance because I'm reading off my phone. Um, so again, my name is Ronald Claude and I'm the Director of Policy and Advocacy at the Black Alliance for Just Immigration, um, ba also known as Baji. We're here today to ensure that we are centering Black immigrants in our advocacy. And so here is a brief snapshot of the reality that Black migrants in this country face and what we need to work together on in order to address those issues. In the United States, Black immigrants who have contact with the criminal legal system have a 76% chance of being deported compared to 45% of the immigrant population overall. And if you're Caribbean, it goes up to 83%. Black immigrants make up only 5% of the undocumented population in the U.S., but make up 20% of the immigrants facing removal based on criminal convictions. Black migrants pay the highest bonds, spend the most time in detention, and are six times more likely to be placed in solitary confinement, which is especially true for Black LGBTQ members. We can't address the immigration system if we don't address the disparate treatment of Black migrants. So that's what we wanted to be here today to center. We wanted to make sure that as we are talking about solutions and immigration policies that would address the situation at the border and in New York, that we don't forget that there's an acute crisis that is happening to black migrants that needs addressing as well. And I'm, I'm proud and glad to be with our public advocate who understands that and the congressional leadership behind me that are working on that matter specifically. So. Uh, short and sweet, but I, I thank you for your time, and uh, I'll pass it on. You'll thank you on. so much. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, last up, while well, we the one, I acknowledge Oliver Moreno from the Immigrant Legal Resources Organization. So thank you so much uh, for everybody for being here. Uh, we got a couple more meetings to go, but happy. I don't know if there's any questions or anything like that. Okay. Peace, everybody. Thank you. Oh, I also want to shout out Fabio Bendieto. I want to.